Hello everyone, welcome back to the 11th lecture of the series on Fiddick Redbook 2017. In today's lecture, we will look at section 9, which deals with tests on completion. Just a reminder that if any of you wants a lifetime access to these videos and the PowerPoints displayed on your screen, please buy the course on Udemy. I have a discount coupon listed in the description below. It's cheap, cheap. So yeah, it helps support the channel and keeps us going, keeps us sending more content your way. So section nine has just four clauses. So I'm assuming this will be a very short lecture. Clauses 9.1 through to clause 9.4. Clause 9.1 is contractor's obligations when it comes to tests on completion. Feel free to pause, screenshot, you know the drill. A couple of slides here. So what this clause effectively says is that very obvious. Once we have completed the project, we have completed all of the works and have informed the engineer and the employer that we have completed our works, we are required to carry out the tests on completion. These tests could be for our electrical systems, plumbing systems, etc, etc. We must bear in mind that our project will never be marked as complete and our taking over certificate will never be issued unless these tests are successfully completed. A very simple example is, for example, we have installed a HVAC system, which is the air conditioning system in our building, for example, and it has failed the initial uh, tests. We will be asked to repeat these tests. We will have to make some adjustments, make sure the tests are successful. Only then, after we present the successful test results to the engineer and the employer, will we get our taking over certificate. Clause 9.2, delayed tests a very important clause with some very important implication. So what this clause says is that if we as contractors delay these tests because we are unprepared or for any other reasons, in this case, what will happen is the engineer will give us a notice that dear contractor, please complete the required tests in 21 days time. If we do not comply with this notification and do not carry out this testing in the required period of time, the engineer or the employer may carry out these tests on their own and will be entitled to recover these costs from us under clause 10, uh, sorry, under clause 20.2, which deals with claims. And if we are ready for testing and the employer uh, delays these tests for whatever reason, Clause 10.3 will apply, which we will look at in the next lecture. A simple uh, implication, like we said earlier, is that if we delay the tests, it might delay our handing over. And if our handing over is delayed, the project completion date is delayed. And if the project completion date is delayed, this will entitle the employer to recover these costs from us under claims, under delay damages, and various other implications of FIDIC Redbook 2017. Let's take a hypothetical example. For example, we have installed lighting in a museum and the lighting control system fails. We are not able to control these lights. The engineer will ask us to reschedule these tests. For example, we do not reschedule these tests and fail to honor this request of the engineer. What will happen is the engineer will carry out these tests. He will employ somebody else and the cost for these will be deducted from our final payment. Clause 9.3 is retesting. Very important clause might look small. What this clause basically says is that if while testing our tests fail we must do the rectification of the works and repeat all of these tests until we have successful test results and these uh, retests and the costs associated with retesting will be borne by us contractors an important implication is that these tests have failed because of our defaults it's, it has got nothing to do with the employer or the engineer these tests have failed simply because uh, we have not done our work properly or something else has happened, which is my responsibility as a contractor. So in this case, I will not be entitled as a contractor for any uh, costs associated with reworks, retesting, any EOT, nothing of that sort. Let's take one more example. For example, we have installed uh, smoke extraction fans and they have failed a certain test, an air volume test. We will rebalance the system and we will retest the system and we will get approval, but we will not get any costs for retesting. Clause 9.4 is, I think, the most serious clause with the most serious implications as far as this section goes. What this says is it puts in a situation that 
we have done the tests on completion they failed we did the retesting as instructed by the engineer this retesting also failed now the employer has a project to take over but he is not unable he is not able to do so because tests on completion have not passed in some cases when the tests on completion are not up to the mark but it is functional the system is functional the employer may make his peace with the fact that okay fine i will accept the works like like this however this will cause a reduction in our contract amount so the engineer may recommend acceptance with the reduced contract price again this is subject to the employer's approval in this case the rights of the employer are protected protected by clauses 11.4 and clauses 20.2 which deals with claims which we will look at in later lectures the most important implication like we said is the employer may agree to take over with compensation for reduced performance this all of this will be very well document documented in the final account which is when the overall uh, commercials for the project are settled all of this will be adjusted then a simple example is for example we are doing an auditorium and there are required sound levels of 55 uh, decibels instead we achieved only 50 decibels as a result of our installed sound system the employer may go like okay fine it's not 100% what i wanted but this auditorium still works and it serves the purpose yeah let me pay the contractor a little less but let me take over the works because he will then start earning money and of course he also recover some costs from us contractors what we need to understand is this is not the ultimate case in case the tests fail we may be asked to do retesting again and again the engineer also has the right to reject this section of the works he may take over the other part of the project but he may reject this uh, section until we make good the defects the engineer may reject the complete thing or the engineer and the employer may make peace with the fact that fine we will accept these works that being said uh, clause 9.4 is done and so is this section very short and sweet i will see you all in the next section section 10 very very soon until then take care of yourselves happy building